Thank you, Andrew. What a powerful message and song. And friends, that's, that's the process. That's the ultimate process. This is why we come to these moments of spiritual community that we were seeking to disrobe so that we can reflect our true self and our pure self. That self that is the image and likeness of the divine. This is what it's all about, of totally surrendering and letting go. And this month is a wonderful month for us to work this process. It is the ninth month of the year. Nine in numerology is completion. We have completed one cycle and next month and the 10 we'll start a new cycle. Nine is the month, this month of divine order. We seek to establish a greater sense of order and harmony and balance in our lives. And in so doing, it requires us to begin to surrender, to put off and to shed, as the Apostle Paul taught in his writings, to put off the old man. And man in biblical literature is mind metaphysically. To put off the old mind and put on the new mind, that mind that is the mind of God, the mind of Christ. Then he says, let this mind that is perfect, this mind that is whole, this mind that knows its oneness with source be in you as it was in Christ Jesus. Divine order. We're working with the series, Get your, Getting the House in Order. We've been looking at the dimensions, the major dimensions of life, the four the spiritual dimension, the mental dimension. Today we're working with the third dimension, the emotional physical dimension and next week we'll look at the financial dimension and when these elements are in alignment there is a greater sense of balance and harmony you know life as we some of us know life to be a roller coaster it's up and down just like your money at times is up and down that's okay i know it's truthful relationships up and down the body's up and down this roller coaster anybody know what i'm talking about be honest i mean act like you know what i'm saying Things up and down, you're high in this moment, then by evening you're down and out. If we can pull and bring our whole self into alignment, spirit, soul, and body in sync as one, there will be a constant flow. It doesn't mean that there won't be some ups and downs of life, but you don't have to go up and down every time the ups and downs, you hit an up and down. You got me? That you can still stay steady. And soar, just like, I don't know why an eagle is coming to mind right now. You can stay steady and soar in the eye of the storm and not even be worried because you know that there is a power. There is a presence. There is an omni-activity. An all-knowing, an all-wise intelligence within you that's in, that enables you to transcend anything. That's powerful. And from that perspective, we cannot afford to play victims in our lives. You can never be a victim as long as the Spirit of God that made this great universe lives inside of you. There is no power that can compare to the power of God that is at work within you. Now unto him who can do exceedingly and abundantly above all that you can hope, think, or imagine according to his power that is at work in you. It is the power of oneness. I just wonder if anybody know anything about that power this morning. If you don't know about it, I hope you get acquainted with it, with it before you leave here today. Because that power will help you and sustain you. It can bring healing in your body. Healing in your mind, healing in your finances, healing in any aspect of your life, world, and affairs that you need to see or desire to see healing manifesting. Are right, we working with, all right, Jack, get off that. <laughs> Whew, that just got, got caught up there real fast, you know. I went up, as Paul says, I went to that third heaven. <laughs> I got to see some things, you know. Oh, whew. it's real. This is real. Oh, taste and see, sacred text says, that the Lord, the law, that God is good. And when you get a taste of goodness, 
when you get a taste of the real thing. You get the real thing, not this fake stuff, this illusion that we try to convince ourselves that's real. When you get a taste of the goodness of God, you'll be able to shout all over the world that God is good all the time. And all the time, God is good. Yes. It's a real, this truth, these teachings, spirituality, oneness is real. It transcends a cerebral kind of intellectual playing with the word of truth. We must learn how to rightly divide it so that it can sustain us when we need to call on it. You can tap into this river. I grew up with well. We had a pump, a well in my house. When I grew up, we had well water. We had a pump. That would pump the water. We would have to dig, I think we had to dig 50 feet, you know, in the ground to tap into the stream. And on occasions, especially during the wintertime, the well would, the pipes would freeze up. Or the pump would lose its prime. In our well house, which was a shelter around the well, we always kept, kept some water. You know, a few jugs. Because we knew that in, when the well, when the pump lost its prime, if you put just a little water, oh my goodness, Alethea, I'm going to try to give you this. If you put a little water in the pump, you got to put something in it to get something out of it, friends. Just a little water in the pump would activate will cause this I can't explain it what happens or how it happens some of you mechanical minds can probably explain it but when you put the water in all I know is that the pump will get its prime and it will start spewing out water in the pipes and then you can turn on every faucet in the house and the water would flow that's what happened when we turn on the power of God inside of us and if you need to prime the pump just put a little water in it and the water is truth I don't care how many books you read. I don't care how many courses and classes and workshops you attend. I don't care how many times you come to Unity Church of Hawaii. You can come day in and day out every day. Though Christ be born a thousand times. Until this word is born in you, it's all forlorn. It's all for naught. Until we awaken to the truth of who and what we are and stand boldly in it. I don't care who likes it and who does it. That's their business, not yours. Shame on them. But stand in it so that you can be the power of God. I didn't say love of God. I believe God's power wants to be made manifest in the earth so you can be the power of God walking around here on this earth. And when you show up, you can adjust the temperature That's some hot stuff right there. If it's hot in the room, you can cool it off. If it's cold, you can warm it up. Because you walk in God. I know I'm totally off subject. (laughs) The songwriter said it this way. And friends, when it's real, you know truth. It says spirit, no spirit. You don't have to convince me of anything. When I'm in spirit, I know spirit. I know when it's not spirit. I know when it's mess. You know what I'm saying? But you know when it's real. And how do you know? Because you have spent time. You have given time in nurturing your relationship. Just as you nurture your marriage, you nurture your, your, uh, your friendship, you must nurture your spiritual relationship. And it cannot happen only on Sundays. You'll be uh, deficient. Is that the word? You'll be spiritually deprived. But it takes a constant communion. A constant connection and walk with the presence and power that we call God. The songwriter says, I don't know why I'm, this is coming. I come to the garden alone. Where the dew 
is still on the roses and the melodies that he gives to me within my heart discloses and he walks with me and God talks with me and God tells me I am his own and the joy we share as we journey there none other has ever I'm talking about your oneness with God today. I'm talking about your connection with source today. And God walks with me and God talks with me and tells me I am his own. And the joy we share as I turn there none other has ever known Alethea keep it going just a little. you gotta walk with God in your heart friends move it out of your mind and walk with God in your heart We really want to declutter and organize our lives. It would require us to totally surrender the ego to the highest expression of life, knowing that that intelligence within you knows what you need to do, what you ought to do, what you're going to do, even before you get there. But it takes a total surrender. You got to surrender this human will to divine will and say, not my will, as the master teacher said, but thy will be done. And then you give the divine permission to use you, to use your hand and your feet, your eyes and your ears, your heart, your mind, your head, your hair, all of you, not just a part of me, but my prayer is take all of me. Use all of me to make the world better. Use all of me to make a difference in this world. Use all of me. And God walks with me and God talks with me and tells me I am his own and the joy we share as I journey there none of them has ever Ever know. That's all I have for you today.